Welcome to the Bee and the Rose Knitting Podcast. I am your host, Kat, um, coming from you, coming to you from um, a very dim Southern California. It is finally fall. Fall is upon us. Um, fall in California is a little bit weird. Like some time, some days, it's like in the 70s and 80s Fahrenheit and other days it's really gloomy and cold um and today is a a fairly mild day but yeah um other than that it's it was really cold yesterday oh my gosh so um yes this is the bee and the rose knitting podcast where I talk about Um, all of the knitting and fiber arts things that I'm up to um, in the past hopefully week probably more likely as it has been two weeks Um, it's been really it was really busy last week Um, I did not realize like even though we didn't have turkey day at my house we had it at my uncle Jimmy's house Um, It was really busy week for me, Um, just with work. I think I slept all of last Monday because that that was my day off, um, and I just completely crashed. Um, Like, I I got some knitting done, but that was it. just sleeping through that day off and then Thursday was my my other day off last week and um I got a lot of knitting done at my at my uncle's house um because like you go and like we have I have so many cousins who are like 12 and under now they're like my uncle Jimmy has five kids and my aunt Sarah has three kids, and then my little sister Maya, and it's just like nine children just running around. Um, so one of the benefits of, of being kind of an adult, not kind of, I am an adult, but half the party doesn't see me like that, because um, you're with family. Um is, like, I could just sit in a corner and knit. And, like, actually, I did have some fairly good conversations with my, like, with my grandfather's, no, with my grandmother's husband, which was cool because we were talking about how um, the service industry is really taking a big hit this year um, due to just staffing issues. Um, Like corporations aren't um, paying enough for people in my age bracket to consider them as a job because we can do other things and get the same amount of money with either more flexibility or less um, less having to deal with really rude people. Um, so people are taking that avenue and like corporations are, are taking a big hit on it and one and when you have a franchise once one of your stores starts to close it's like a, a domino effect um so it was a really interesting conversation about economics this thanksgiving um and i hope that all of you guys um here in america or if you are an ac- expat and you're out in the world that you had a lovely thanksgiving Um, For those of you who don't celebrate Thanksgiving um, on the third Thursday of the fourth, the fourth Thursday of November, I hope you had a lovely Thursday and just enjoyed all of the online sales that America drummed up. (laughs) Um, uh, Speaking of, I, oh my gosh, I didn't buy a lot of yarn, but I bought a new computer. (laughs) So I wasn't, I hadn't planned on it. Um, like I knew there was a possibility of me going out on, um, Black Friday or in this case Thursday night and, um, finding a new better computer. Um, and I did, it's, I think it's still a notebook. 
but it's an HP and it has, sorry, my nose is really itchy. It's been, it's really dry out here. We're having a really dry season. I actually like had a nosebleed at work a couple, like two weeks ago. Um, luckily I was already in the bathroom, so it was an easy cleanup and nothing got contaminated, <laughs> but it's still like, it's so dry. I'm getting nosebleeds and my nose is really itching right now. So maybe I can, I'm not even gonna, I don't know. We'll see if we can edit this. <laughs> um, there are editing apps for this computer, which is lovely. And hopefully I'll be able to utilize, um, to better the quality of this podcast. And like, Maybe I'll be able to put words on the screen. I don't know. We'll see. I'm really excited. Um, I do owe my mom $200 <laughs> because I didn't have the capital for it. And she's like spending money right and left. And it's just like have have money. And like this isn't a Christmas present from her. This is a I borrowed $200 from her so I could afford a, a new laptop um, because... I got, this is a 15 inch HP, um, notebook and it has a whole terabyte of storage, which is kind of awesome. And I had a feeling that we were going to get to that point in, um, technology where terabytes are needed in order to store data because as much information as we can store on tiny little things, we're going to use more of that. Um, it also has touchscreen. Um, it has um, a dictation program on it already, which is super awesome because I cannot write. Um, the moment I, the moment the thought enters my brain and I vocalize it, it goes. It just goes. Um, there's a connection, a, a unlinked connection between my my hand and my mouth so even typing like typing is a little easier but saying things I'm more of an oral person um so I'm really excited about that it came with a mouse which I have not used yet um with which is YouTube not YouTube Bluetooth capabilities, so I don't even have to like use one of the two USB ports for it. And it came with a backpack, which is awesome because my computer case is falling apart because I use it as a purse. <laughs> um, so that was a really exciting thing that happened. And then um, on backtracking a little bit on Monday of last week, my aunt texted me and um, asked me how I did with wool and I was like how do you mean do you mean to spin it do you mean to knit with it crochet needle felt I do all of these things I'm about to start dyeing wool how do you mean and she um she commissioned me for a blanket scarf um which is really awesome she's like I was gonna buy this on Etsy but um, I thought that maybe you could make it for me instead. And it wasn't one of those like, oh, maybe you can make it for me instead for free. It's like, no, she's, she paid me a hundred dollars, um, to, uh, to do the blanket scarf. That's the yarn I bought for it. It's not big enough. That's going right back to nitpicks, but it was for the project. And, um, so I went, she spent put a hundred dollars into my PayPal account and I went on nitpicks and I bought, um, 12 wool of the Andes worsted cause they're, they were really cheap at the time. And I didn't think my brain, I'm still kind of new at this. I've only been knitting for a year. I've only been crocheting for two and I like, my knowledge of yarn had previously been like Lion brand and acrylics, like really big box store acrylic kind of things. So it didn't really click in my brain that worsted weight is not going to do it for this sweater. Uh, not sweater, scarf. Um, so I'm going to go, I've already, um, 
set up the refund the refund to um, print out the package slip and the um, information slip um, to return those 12 balls and then I'm gonna get I think let me check real quick I'm gonna get which one the super tough puff um, yarn because um, while it's obviously it's more expensive and it's gonna take a few more balls than that I think it's going to be the correct size for the st stitches she wants to be shown um, back when the arm knitting blankets were super popular she had approached me to commission me for one of those and I, I didn't end up going for that um, because like the roving unless you buy it and it's yarn and it's like semi at least semi felted that that's gonna fall apart immediately um, so and, and the yarn was so expensive like um, the blanket on Etsy she showed me was a hundred and twenty eight dollars and that's one skein of wool for that project so it just wasn't in the cards um, but this is much more doable I think and I can create a project that I'm proud of so I will hopefully have that done for her by April by hopefully I mean I told her I would have it done for her by April um, so um, I'm just gonna send that back out and get the yarn and get started on it as soon as I finish either as soon as I finish knitting up my socks or as soon as the yarn comes in whichever comes first um, the other thing I bought from Knit Picks, um, because of the tiny little cash she gave me is naked yarn oh my god you guys this is amazing I love it um I got Knit Picks Imagination Bear um and this is fiber content 50% merino and 25% super fine, not 15, 50, 5, 0 percent merino, 25% super fine alpaca, which I'm really excited about. I love alpaca so much. Um, and 25% nylon, it's fingering weight. I bought six skeins of this. I'm planning on buying at least a few more. Um, and I'm going to dye it up. I I haven't really decided if I'm going to dye up dye them all up in the same color or if I'm going to like do um them all in different colors and just play with it. I kind of want to knit up a sweater, so I'm thinking um they'll all be about this oh, I'll probably try and go either a tonal or the same kind of speckling. Um because I really want to knit a sweater and it's really hard to get a hold of a sweater's quantity um, for a person my size in, in a cheap way um, with actual wool. Like I could go down to the Michaels and buy two pounds of acrylic yarn and, and that would probably be a sweater's quantity for me and I could get right on that. Um, but I do kind of want to do it in wool just because I don't like the feel of acrylic and now that I've now that I've been totally spoiled like I don't like handling that much plastic um like it's totally fine when it's one of my cat hats and it's totally fine um if it's a toque for somebody else or um, my battery is running low I'm gonna pull my power cord over real fast <laughs> All right, in case you saw my pants, I'm only put together from the top up. So, yeah. Do, 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 do. Don't touch before I plug you in. Oh god, why is this over here? If it was on the other side, there would be times where I'd be like, why is this over there? Okay. 
All right, is that the same position? I hope it's the same position. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so like if it's a toque or um, a project for somebody else, then it changed my brightness. So it's going to be about a second where there's a lot of glare on my glasses. Oh, well. Um, if it's a toque or a scarf for somebody else or a gift for somebody else, um, I don't mind working with acrylic. But if it's um, if it's a gift or um, for somebody I know um, will will wash it, will enjoy it. Um, I prefer using uh, natural fibers, um, and they're not that hard to get a hold of. It's just sometimes the price, um, depending on the project, can be a little much. Mm. So those are the two things I bought. Um, I also bought this. This is a constellation, no, an astronomy, astrology, astrology mug that I got from Target. It's um, for Libra. It has a positive quality um, that Libras have that says we're charming. I don't believe them, but some people may find me charming. Who knows? And then it says um, a negative trait, which says impatient. And I'm I'm fairly impatient. I can agree with that. Uh, it's the same on the back. And then there's my lipstick. <laughs> and I'm drinking coffee as usual. It's Folgers. It has Hershey's creamer. It's delicious. Um, yeah. So those are my acquisitions that I paid for this week. And then, oh my god, you guys. Oh my god, you guys. If you watch me and you watch Knit for Brains, you probably already know. So... I think a month ago, because I just released another podcast this morning, but a month ago, um, Knit for Brains had a, um, a giveaway for, I believe it's 500 subscribers, um, and you put in the comments what you like about the show, and I did, I, I did put, I commented, and then three weeks went by and their new podcast, uh, no, two weeks went by and their new podcast was up. I didn't watch it immediately because um, usually I do. Sometimes I'm, life is real busy and I'm just like, I have to pick and choose which podcast I watch first. Um, so about six days after they released the podcast, um, I had my mom's Apple TV on, and I just had this gut feeling. I was like, I should watch Knit for Brains urgently. It's an urgent feeling. It's not like, oh, I'm so excited to watch. It's like, no, you need to watch this. Watch it. Oh, hey, I could pause the record video. I'll remember that for next time I have to get up. Anyways, so I watched. I was like, must watch this podcast right now. So I did. And they announced the the winner of their of their podcast and they said my name. Well my the, the name of my channel. I was just like I screamed you guys. I screamed. Oh my god. Oh my god. I want a giveaway. I like I my mom wins giveaways left and right. She wins everything. I have a little bit of that, but not quite to the level of Sandra. But I was just so surprised and happy. Oh my god, you guys. This is a beautiful pack that um, Laura and Alicia, Alicia put together. It's just gorgeous. Oh my god. Um, this bag is... Um, it's about a two scan project bag and it's by um, Whimsy Stitches Designs. It's got florid, it's green background with Florida Lee. And there's so much in this. It was way more than I was expecting. Um, is there anything? Did I take it out? Oh, it's. Um, so 
It also came with this um, Steel City Stitchers um, ball sack, which is sunflowers on a blue background, um, some other peonies, I think. And it has a beautiful blue interior and a yarn guide, and it's amazing. And I would already be using it on a project, but I wanted to show you guys first. Oh my god. They sent me a handwritten note on this lovely, lovely stock. It's just, oh my god, you guys. It's amazing. And then, um, <sighs> This is their card, and it comes with this awesome little stitch marker. Oh my god. It's Look at all those amazing colors in there. It's just so cute and delicate, and the whole punch is a heart, by the way. That's amazing. I love the details on it. Um, I'm, I'm just so excited, y'all. And then I also have, um, from Steel City Stitchers, um, Steel City Stitchers card, a lamb stitch marker, and a pin. It's so awesome. I'm so happy. And then I got another pack of stitch markers, and these ones are freaking emojis. They're emoji stitch markers, I think, um... There are about four of them in here. No, there are five. Yeah, there are five in here. And I love it because I need more stitch marker sets. I have too many projects going on at once. And I just have a bunch of those inner lock locking boy ones, which are fine. I love them. But it's nice to have something fun on projects. And then, oh my god, you guys. The yarn. I couldn't really see it on the podcast, or I wasn't paying that much attention. I was paying a lot of attention, but some things you miss things. It's Tweety. It's, this is um, by Moffy and the Squid. It's green with, um, I'd call them Christmas light um, tweeds in there. I really like it. This is the St. Patrick's Day colorway. On 85% um, merino um, and 5% neps. 15% neps. Sorry, I, I can't do the math. Um, it's 100 gram skein, 400 meters. How many how many yards is that? I'll have to look that up. And there's there's the squid. Oh my god, y'all! I'm so excited. I've I've been like dying to get a hold of Mothy and Squid Yarn. Um, it can be really hard to get, just like when you're in the UK, it's hard to get American yarn. It's really expensive to get UK yarn um, in the Americas. Um, so I'm, I'm just so, so excited. And there's just one more thing in this little pack you, I have to show you. Um, ah, ah, there we go, out of the pack. Look at this beautiful, beautiful card. Um, it is also by Whimsy Stitches Designs. It's gorgeous. Oh my god, you guys. Like, you can customize your own note, personalize it, and it's just so cute. <laughs> It's a sheep that's, it looks kind of like a tree, and it's on a spool. And I absolutely love it. And I'm going to have to write them, like, a proper thank you note. I don't think I'm going to use this card for that, because it's, it's, it's really cute, and I want to keep it. <laughs> but I need to find a really good stock card, like, that's individual and... And send it out to them because that's just, it's so amazing and it got here so quick. Um, the the Florida Lee bag has a nice yellow fob so I can kind of like, oops, oh, I can't coordinate things. 
just hold it on my wrist and walk in it. I love it so much. I'm so excited. Oh, so cute, Papa. My dog is, like, behaving next to me for once. He's just laying down next to me. He's not... There are no dogs outside for him to bark at, no neighbors to bark at, just my dog napping next to me. It's great. He's a good boy. Um, I also picked up at Michael's on Monday. No, I didn't have the car yesterday. Must have been on Sunday. Sunday I picked this up at the Michael's. Um, this is a box. It's really cute. It has snowmen on it. I love snowmen. They didn't have any, like, flat top opens. Um, this is the inside color, and then it's quite big. Um, because I think that in the new year, I'm going to be participating in the box of socks knit along. Knit along. And also, I like a nice, a nice box for my knitted socks. I kind of just, like throw my clothing about, but, like, when it's knitwear, you want to be a little more careful with it. Like, I can't find the first pair of socks I knit anywhere. I think somebody might have consumed them. Hmm. But the second pair, I'm, like, I know where they are at all times. Um, it's nice to have, like, a special place for them, um, where your dog's not gonna go and eat them. Um, and so I think I'm going to be keeping my um, knitted socks in there um, and then have, do the 12 pairs, which I think I can get 12 pairs out in 12 months. Um, although it seems to be taking me a month and a half to get two pairs out. Oh. We'll see. Um, I'm not going to put too much pressure on it for myself, but it's a good goal. Now that I know how to do them, I just want to do them all the time. And it's nice and secular. It's not like consumerism Christmas, and it's not like super, let's put a God quote on it. Um, which, you know, those are fine, but I prefer snowmen. I love snowmen so much. Oh my God, have I mentioned. Um, so... Go on to FOs because I do have an FO. Um, it's in the box. Okay. Because that was just a convenient place to put it at the time. So these are my evergreen socks. I finished them in a week and a half, which is really good time. Just like, I just blew through these charts. And then once I got the heel done, it was like, Smooth sailing. This is the worst yarn I've ever worked with besides like that one time I tried to make a blanket out of Super Saver Red Heart. It's supposed to have been 75% merino and 25% nylon. It feels like acrylic. It just feels like acrylic. It feels like way too stretchy. Um, way too stretchy. And just really crunchy super freaking crunchy and I don't know maybe it is wool and I just have to bring a sample of the leftovers to um Nancy at Common Threads and have her do a burn test and tell me whether or not I've I've paid way too much for this acrylic yarn um and I'm hoping that it's it is what they say it is that it's from Guatemala, dyed by a Guatemalan who was paid a fair price, and then sold to me, and that is wool. But I I I don't know, and it doesn't feel like it. Um, but this is what's left. This is 28 grams of um, Yerba Yerba yarn um, on the at. At Attilin, Attilin sock base in the Paz colorway dyed by Lupe. Um, and these are for my little sister, Bridget. Bridget, if you're watching the podcast, no. No. Um, I'm really hoping they fit. Um, if they don't fit, then I will undo the bind off and I will um, add some more rows or something, 
Um, she likes the shorter sock, so um, I did the chart, and then I did about an inch, maybe, of stockinette before I turned the heel. And for the heel, I did a kiss, kiss lips, fish heel, um, because I like them. And then the toe um, was a standard round toe, I think. I think so. I'm still learning the whole sock things, y'all. Um, but I'm really hoping she likes them because she picked it all out. And um, except I picked out the the pattern that I used. Um, and so we will see. Her birthday is coming up in two days, so I should probably figure out a birthday present because these are for Christmas. But I don't know what to get her for her actual birthday. It's the thing about when you have birthdays, like, around Christmas. Like, I, I managed to, like, not be born during Christmas season. I missed it by three weeks. On the dot. On the nose, I missed it by three weeks. Um, so I don't, like, nobody ever is like, oh, Caitlin's birthday is around Christmas. No, I'm I'm so far away from it. It's golden. Um, but Bridget and Maya and my mom are all around the holiday season. Like, Bridget's birthday is almost never on Thanksgiving because she's on the 30th. Um, so while it gets pretty freaking close, it misses the mark just a little bit every year, I think. Um, and then my mom's birthday is the 28th. So it's definitely like, this is your Christmas gift and your birthday gift. Happy birthday Christmas. And then my little sister, Bridget, my little sister, Maya, that's the one, um, is the 3rd of January. So she's also like Christmas birthday. Yay. <laughs> it's on Christmas, but it's wrapped in happy birthday. <laughs> so... We try not to do that because I know it bothers my mom um, when it happens to her, but it's what the wallet can afford. Um, so, yes, that is all of my FOs. That's what I've been working on for the past two weeks, and I just blew right past it. It's amazing. Awesome. Then I cast these on because I finished these on Thanksgiving. I cast these on. This is whip. On Thanksgiving um, I don't think I joined on Thanksgiving I think it was a little too busy to actually do a proper join um, and then I've already turned the heel which is awesome uh, these are a little shorter um, these are my little sister Moira socks they are done in a jowl by um, Languals um, in the self-striping pattern, which is pretty cool. Um, I did just, like, right before I started doing the podcast, I wanted to, like, get good enough past the heel, um, as we can see here, because uh, I did the heel of the past two days, which is, like, the longest a heel's ever taken me. Um, but I was, I was busy. I went to a concert last night and I was like standing there in the crowd knitting my heel, uh, which luckily the fish, kip, fish lips kiss heel is easy enough that you can do that. You can totally turn your heel on your circular nine inch needles during a concert. <laughs> um, it was really awesome. But I did, I did have a problem where the nine inch circs would like fall out of a stitch or two and it would be like the twin stitches. I was like tearing my hair out. I was like, why do you keep hurting me like this? Just stay. Um, but we figured it out. It's beautiful and it's done now. Um, but I found a, a, a tie in in the yarn and of course it was like on the heel. Like, if that was the top of the foot, I probably would have just been like, okay, cool, a tie-in on the top of the foot. Whatever. But I don't want to want the tie-in to be where they're going to be stepping. 
that's uncomfortable. That's like, imagine a pebble in your shoe, except the pebble is attached to your sock and you can't get it out. No. So I did, I cut out, um, I cut out the little knot and I did a Russian join. And the first time I tried the Russian join on this, like I, I used the Russian join. It was like the first thing I learned how to do when I crocheted because I was, um, I didn't want the, the knots to be there at all. So I found the Russian join. I was like, this is what we're going to do. Awesome. On this project, the first Russian join I did failed. Like, I cut the ends away, um, like, the extra tail off. And it immediately was like, nope, I'm done. I'm not going to be here. I'm out. <laughs> I got to pull back more stitches because I had cut, like, two inches of the, of, um, the working yarn off. And I needed that extra space. Um, and try again. And I did. And it worked. And it's perfect. It's knit in. You can't even, like, like there are little bits of end popping out. Because I did love, leave a little tiny bit of margin so it wouldn't just slip out this time. Um, and if it ever does, this yarn comes with 10 grams of darning thread. So it'll be okay. She can send them back to me. I'll fix them up. I'll send them back out. It'll be beautiful. Um, or maybe she'll learn how to darn herself. Because she doesn't know how to sew. So. Um, but I wouldn't expect her to do her own um, repairs. That's the word, repairs. I think this is probably going to be like the second longest video I've ever done. We'll see after edits, if I can edit. Um, so yeah, that was a fun little thing to deal with before starting the podcast. Um, other than that, like, it's been fine. Like, it's a little harder for Mo, and I think it will be for Rhiannon as well. They have smaller feet than Bridget and I. Like, I have, like, big feet that are strangely proportioned, um, and then Bridget wears a size 10 and a half. Like, I would wear a size 9 if my feet weren't misshapen. Um, but my feet are misshapen, so size 9 it is. Oh, no, I'm sorry, size 10 it is. Um, and that's fine. But, like, so Bridget, I use pretty much my, after I got past the charts, like, I cast on 74 stitches because I'm on a 3 millimeter needle. Sorry. Um, so, I figured it would be enough. Itchy nose. I figured it would be enough, um, considering the gauge is a little different. And then, from there, I did the, um, I think I knit 44 rows of stockinette for the foot, um, instead of 42, um, just to give it a little bit of length, because I don't have that length. I mostly have width. Um, and um, I'm really hoping that these fit her. Um, if, if these, if I've spent like a hundred something dollars on yarn and several, several hours on knitting, and then these socks don't fit my sisters, I'm gonna be real sad. Like, for my oldest sister and my youngest sister, I live with them, so it'll be easier. I can just be like, try this on. Try this on now. I know it's on the needles. Try it on. Um, but for the middle two, they one of them lives in San Diego, which is like half an hour to 45 minutes away, and the other one lives halfway across the country. So, like, I won't know if they fit until they're on their feet. Which is a little nerve-wracking, but it'll be okay. They, they will appreciate the gesture, I'm sure. And they'll send them back and be like, these don't fit. I'll be like, okay, I'll do these little modifications and we'll be all good. Yeah. Um, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Um, but I'm hoping to get these socks finished 
by the weekend, I have a lot of, or at least by next Monday, I have a lot of time off. Um, this week, um, I, I'm knitting now. I have to learn how to knit and be able to look at the camera, because I'm alone here. Um, if I go like this, oh my god, you can see me. Um, and less of the darkness in the kitchen, because I don't have the lights on. Um, let's see. So, there was a kerfuffle in my schedule at work. Of course. So, I asked for Saturday off because I'm going to go see Welcome to Night Vale live performance in Los Angeles with a friend of mine. Um, I asked for it off a month ago. She gave me Sunday off. Like, well, that's okay because I'm going to go to my Spinners Guild, uh, my Fiber Arts Guild on Sunday. Um, I'm not going to work on Saturday. I have plans. Um, I've told them, I, I left a note for my boss and then I'll see her today or tomorrow in a couple of hours, hopefully, and I'll talk to her then. And perhaps maybe that means I don't get Sunday off, but I'm okay with that because it's better than losing $88. Um, but I'm also not going to skip out on something I've been looking forward to for literally almost a year. Um, I bought the tickets several months ago. Um, I, I was the reason my friend remembered to go in the first place because, um, about the time I put in my my notice that I need that day off, I, I messaged her on Facebook. I was like, "Hey, are you are you still planning to go to the show?" And she's like, "Oh, what? When? Where? Who? How? What? When?" I know I said one twice. That's okay. It's about what happened. Um, and I, I reminded her of the information. She's like, "Oh yeah, let me see if I can get that Saturday off." And and then they bought tickets. Uh, her and her boyfriend bought tickets, and so we're all going to go up to L.A., and it's already this big thing, so if I step out, it's kind of rude as fuck. Um, like, they'll still have a good time without me, but, mm. So, I'm definitely not going to work on Saturday, and I, I will have probably a lot of car knitting to do, because L.A. is... Two hours away, good with good traffic, and um, commuter traffic can be kind of not great, super bad. Um, and then Sunday is the guild. I'm going to be trying to work on Maya's yarn some more. I have not touched it in a month, about, um, which is typical at this point. Um, I just need to get through it, but it's just not enjoyable right now, and it's nothing to do with the fiber itself. It's just to do with, like, finding your zone, finding the correct setting for the weight yarn you're trying to spin, and just, like, this, the correct speed, the correct tension, um, all of that needs to be in sync or something will you'll be stopping every two minutes to find the yarn that ran away from you and that's what I'm dealing with right now because this fiber is so thin it's le leaving the guides of my flyer and if any of you guys have a suggestion for that I am all ears man I do not know what like I'm thinking maybe like plastic wrap to close my flyer so that it's it's not an open hook um, not the flyer, but the guide, um, and maybe that will help, but I'll, I would then have to find the plastic wrap for it, I don't know, <sighs> it's a dilemma, and I just have to get it done, because it's almost December, we're like, today's the 28th, we have two more days of November, um, and then that's gonna be it, and then it's the new new month, and we're that much closer. I'll only have 25 days left to spin chain ply 
and knit up a pair of socks. Like I'm already missing the the sock spackle that inspired me to go ahead and just do this project in the first place. Which kind of sucks because I, I definitely have two ounces of fiber on there already. I could totally just stop now and chain ply it and then do the heels, cuffs, and toes in like white or something. Um, but I don't think, I don't think I'd be happy with that. Um, so, I'm not, and also the time's run out to do that. I don't have another day off um, before, before Friday to just burn through all of that and just not sleep at all because I'm going to knit these socks now. Um, yeah, so I want to get that done probably this week. Um, I think I'm just going to take Monday and not knit on Monday, just spin on Monday. I have a lot of podcasts to catch up to, both video and audio. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. And um, then I will be done with that particular project and um, I can I can just get it on the way that at least it'll be to the point where I can start knitting. Um, another thing I wanted to do, so let's see, it's just about time to start balling this up. This is the alpaca merino blend that my older sister picked out for her no-show socks. Um, it's really soft. I think maybe I should have gotten the lace instead. She did show me the lace first, but I was like, mm, the fingering weights. Let's do the fingering weight. I think it was wrong because this is going to be kind of thicker probably than what she's used to wearing with her uh, with her shoes, but we'll see. Um, we'll cross that ridge when, bridge when we get to it. Um, I'm really excited about all that. And then I bought a stock pot for dyeing. I need to get gloves and a face mask and um, need to figure out if vinegar is going to be okay or if I do need to go out and get citric acid. Um, I've been told that vinegar is okay, so we'll see how that goes. Um, other than that, I think that is all the fiber related things I have today. Um, I want to give, oh gosh. I can't, I want to give a shout out. I'm going to pause for a second. Let's just, I'm back. So, um, I just wanted to give a shout out because um, Bernadette of, I believe, the Wet Coast, the Wet Coast podcast um, is, has marched out on her own, is doing her own podcast right now. She just released the video on Sunday. Uh, no, yes, Sunday. And I think you guys should all go check it out. Um, I really, I really like watching people who are like, it's their first episode. Um, like, it's really fun to discover new people, even though they're not necessarily new to the community. Um, they might, or not even necessarily new to podcasting. Maybe they're just going out on their own. Um, for a minute, but this is really hard. Um, it can it can be really hard to just get out of your own mind and relax enough to like to talk to your camera and um, not kind of have to worry about how other people are going to are going to respond. Um, like I don't. I don't have that much of a followership, um, but I appreciate all of you that in that like watch me um, and and stick around to see my improvements. Um, and it's really encouraging when a new person follows or um, subscribes or likes a video um, because it means that you know I'm not just talking to a void. I would be doing this if I was talking to a void anyway. Um, but it's just, it's really nice to know that you're not screaming into the void all by yourself and that nobody's looking <laughs> because that, that can be a thing. Um, so I think that if you haven't already, you should definitely go check out her video and, um, 
leave her a like and a hello in the comments and um because yeah it's super awesome um I think that's all the new podcasts I've picked up for now um but I am I've like I have a giant backlog of people so um I'll probably have if I remember to put it in because I've I've been forgetting to do mentions um if I remember to put it in next week, I'll probably have more next week. But that is all I have for this week. And I hope you guys have a lovely, lovely rest of your day and a good week. And hopefully I will see you guys next week. Thank you.